Welcome back. All right, so I wanted to do a little bit of a different video today. So this won't technically be hockey news related or anything. It's more channel related. I used to do channel related videos a lot at the start, but uh, stopped. Eventually I said, you know what? Nah, I'm not going to do this anymore. I like just channel updates and stuff. Um, but really, in all honesty, I ended up with a formula that worked. I ended up with a formula that I felt like was the most true to who I was and so that's why I do the previews the reviews the power rankings and all that because that's all stuff that I I feel like is is most closely related to how I I watch hockey and it it suits me suits the channel and so that's why I do things the way I do them uh, but back in 2016 when the channel became the hockey channel uh, it was a little different. Things were things were very different than they are now. Uh, I had a full time job working at Vantage Foods, which is a, a meat processing plant. It's not even Vantage anymore, but um, not a job that was. Um, it wasn't very rewarding. And when when the raises came around every year, there was sort of a feeling of I I don't know that these raises are making me want to stay here. And I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this who identify with that, right? Um, and so I had jobs like that for over 20 years. I worked almost 10 years in that last job. And the only reason that I left was because the channel was doing really well and I needed to be able to spend more time making videos and, and helping the channel grow. And Yvonne talked me into it. I really was resistant. I was like, I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do this. And I definitely had coworkers asking me, are you sure you're going to do this? And I was like, yep. And they're like, you're crazy. Because at the time, the channel wasn't generating enough revenue for me to just work through the channel and and not have another job. So I had another part-time job for about six months after. But I was also, when the channel started, which was about May of, of April and May of 2016, um, I was bitter. I was alone. Uh, I never went out. I, I did not have a girlfriend or any any ideas of one. Uh, and I was pretty depressed. Uh, it was it was a really dark time. Uh, from 2014 until 2016 was a, a pretty dark time for me. And it changed slowly. And I know as the channel started to, to grow, it, it made me feel like, hey, maybe there's a chance. So I remember when I monetized the channel and that first day I made four cents. And everybody kind of chuckled and they were like, you made four cents, you, you, that's nothing. What are you doing? And I was like, but I made four cents not working at this crappy job. So I made it working at the job I wanted, which is the job I have now. And so over the, the months, I would say, hey, I made $4 yesterday. And they were like, it's $4. But again, you went home and you spent two hours recording and uploading videos. You made $4. Why? You could stay for overtime make 25 bucks an hour and go home with 50 bucks. They weren't wrong. I could have worked overtime and made more money at work and you know, and there you go. Well, you normally end up getting bumped to that next tax bracket and you actually make less. I, I definitely had some guys laughing at my pay stub when I'd work a bunch of overtime and then I'd find out I worked like eight hours of overtime and I made an extra 50 bucks above what they did in my take home pay. So it, it feels less rewarding that way when you're like, I don't know that I wanna work all this overtime when I just get more taxes off my check. I, I think this is a bad idea. So it grew and over the time it grew and I would I would do like a subscriber count at work as well, which sounded ridiculous at the start. Like I got 25 subscribers, not bad, not too shabby. And, and so it grew and it got to the point where I was talking to Yvonne online before we met in person. And I, I was kind of excited because I was going to hit my first 1,000 subscribers. And, and I, I was kind of beside myself. Like, I, I don't know, I, how did I get 1,000 subscribers? So August of 2016 is when I got my first pay from, from Google. And it was a little over $100. Uh, it wasn't, wasn't that much. But I was so excited. I was so excited to have made money not at my regular job. I was so excited to have made some money that wasn't related to my crappy 40-hour-a-week job. Which, yes, it paid my bills. It kept the roof over my head. It was stability and that's the thing we all we get caught up in that nine to five 40 hour work week because that's your stability that pays your bills and so the idea of finding another job or taking a risk um, it, it doesn't really appeal to you especially when in my case being in my 40s I didn't feel like I had any other options I kind of felt like okay I'm, I'm here until I retire um, which was which was a thought I didn't like I didn't like the idea of being in there until I until I retired so I get my first 
payment from in August, and I, I remember this because in part, uh, Yvonne mentions this to me a lot, like, oh, I remember we were talking, you got your first, we call it paycheck, but my first deposit from Google, because uh, it's the Google ads that generated the revenue that allowed me to say, hey, I'm actually making money. Now, September of 2016 is when Yvonne and I actually met in person. We had been talking online on and off since April. Um, so yeah, we, we met online through a dating site. Hey, it can work, it can happen. And uh, I, was, I was very, very slow moving on that one. Very, very much so. I was very much of the mind of, I don't, I don't know if I can be a boyfriend to somebody. I don't know if I wanna do that. I think I'm too old for this crap. But it turned out I wasn't, and July of 2017, we got married. And in between September 16th, or September, I should say, of 2016 and July of 2017, the channel changed dramatically. Uh, first off, I got out of that dingy apartment that I was in and moved into the really, really tiny abode um, of, of Yvonne's. And it was, it was a challenge. It was a challenge for me to be able to do my videos in that really, really tiny space. Uh, I didn't really have space. And so, and this is where I started using whiteboards. Uh, the notes on the whiteboards are more for me than for anybody else. And I've, I've explained this to people, but I still get, I can't read the whiteboard. Yeah, I, I sometimes I have trouble reading the whiteboard, but that's why the notes are there, so I don't forget things. And I, so yeah, the forgetting things goes all the way back to 2016. So I've seen people joking, oh, it must, must be getting earlier, it's Alzheimer's. Okay, but back to 2016, I would make videos and then realize, oh, I forgot what I was supposed to talk about. I just, there's a million different things that go on in my brain at a time, and sometimes whatever monkey's in charge at the time takes the topic I want to talk about, just boots it into a corner, and then brings it back when I'm all done, because he wants to screw with me. But, yeah, September 2016, when I met Yvonne, everything really changed for me, because the bitter, gone. The alone, gone. The depressed, gone as well. I was happy. And... Um, honestly, it worked really, really well right from the start. It just did. Now, around the same time that um, Yvonne and I uh, started trying to figure out this whole new living arrangement and, and how it was all going to work, uh, the swearing in videos disappeared. And it disappeared because uh, it came out that YouTube was, you know, gearing towards promoting the more fam family-friendly content. Videos were being demonetized for the amount of swearing in them. Uh, demonetization was a problem back in 2017 and there was the dreaded dreaded uh, yellow uh, icon on your video for limited ads and that was happening to me now where that really affected me too was that the Las Vegas Golden Knights were coming into the league in 2017 and I realized this is a brand new audience this is a brand new fan base um, a lot of people were talking down to them, oh, the NHL shouldn't be in Las Vegas. And I thought, hockey fans are hockey fans. So um, I was fine with introducing people to hockey. I've been told that the channel's good for introducing people to hockey. I have no problem with that because views are views, wherever those views come from. And I, I didn't have any problem with Vegas joining the National Hockey League. I didn't think it was a big deal. Um, and so, yeah, I ended up with a lot of fans in Las Vegas. Uh, we took a trip to Las Vegas in 2018, uh, July of 2018, and it went really well. It went really, really well. Um, and I started to understand at that point too, just how many people were watching my videos and how many people were were listening to me. And and this, this is where things got crazy, right? So uh, the swearing in videos disappeared and I get a lot of people that, that message me or email me and say, hey, we watch your videos as a family or my kids watch your videos and we feel a lot better about watching your videos because you don't have a lot of swearing in them like some of the other YouTubers do. Uh, the weird thing is I've seen people say, well, it makes you, makes you less relatable when you're not swearing. The swearing makes you more relatable. Well, it shouldn't. I mean, I understand where people are coming from with that, but it, it doesn't change what I'm saying in a video if I throw in a bunch of colorful metaphors. Thank you, Star Trek Four. But Star Trek was the show back in the 60s and 70s and 80s. It doesn't matter. Uh, but taking that out of the videos was relatively easy for me because I used to go to church all the time and I had a way of just knocking the swearing out of my, out of my, my vocabulary. I did that around my grandmother as well. So when I shoot videos, I just shoot videos as if I'm talking to my grandmother, who sadly is no longer with us. 
Uh, but that's kind of how I look at it. And when I started doing videos, it was with the idea that, hey, you know, people could watch these videos that I haven't seen in a long time, like old friends and family and such. Um, and then it changed. It changed. Now, the objectivity part is something that I know there's people who don't like how objective, meaning I just take the emotion and pull it out of reviews and, and, and just videos in general. I think it's important for me to be objective if I'm going to market my channel as being for fans of all 32 teams. So if I was if I was saying, okay, I'm going to do this as a Canucks fan channel, then yeah, I can have all the subjectivity and all that. Well, that, that was a stupid play and ah, they, they screwed up here and just get really emotional about it. But in order for me to have a channel where I'm going to be able to go down to California and meet people, or I'm going to be able to go to Nevada and meet people and talk to them about stuff on the channel, it's important that I'm objective, that I don't come across as just a, a fanboy for a team or a couple of teams. So the objectivity in reviews, while I know people, oh, I wish you'd give more opinion stuff. Ah, the, the reviews, like, I've thought about changing the way I do them, and I do put opinion stuff in each portion of the review. It's not a lot, but it's sprinkled in there. Uh, usually right when I start talking about each game or right towards the end, I will, eh, this team didn't have a great night tonight. Something along those lines. Uh, I keep it really kind of vague. Uh, but it all it all adds up to to the power rankings as well. So if if you watch the nightly reviews and then watch the power rankings, you shouldn't be that surprised about where teams are in the power rankings. Uh, I, I think a lot of the people who get mad about the power rankings may not be watching the nightly reviews because there are certain teams that I'm like, I, I don't like how this game went down. I don't like how they played or I thought this team played really, really well. And... It, it, there, there's a correlation between me talking up a team after a game or talking down a team and where they end up being on that power rankings at the end of the week. But I'm going to change the way that I do a lot of this stuff next season. I just haven't figured out how to change it so that it's uh, it's still my content. It's still something that I'm I'm really proud of, and it, it's not completely different from what I've done before. But I'm gonna I'm gonna make some tweaks, and uh, it's stuff I've been going over in my head for years. I'm absolutely I'm going to do that. Um, but it's it's not it's not going to lead to a different way of doing power rankings necessarily. It's not going to lead to a different way of me doing reviews. Uh, just the way I present it is going to be a little bit different next season. It's too late in the year now for me to start doing that. Uh, but I'm I'm gonna try to you know change things up a little bit next season with how I how I present them and the information I give when I do it. Um, but the the objectivity I think is really really important and part of how the channel grew. Now, the channel's reach. I've talked about how, you know, when I realized certain players were watching my content, uh, when I realized families of former NHLers were watching my content, when I went to Twin Rinks in Chilliwack and Mo LeMay, who I watched play for the Vancouver Canucks, the Boston Bruins, walks up to me and, hey, I, aren't you the hockey guy? And I'm like, okay, this is not right. This is not right. I'm supposed to be walking up to him and saying, hey, aren't you Mo LeMay? So I started to realize, like, okay, there's a lot of reach here. There's a lot of people watching. There's a lot of uh, players watching, former and current. Um, when when I got the, you know, now famous call from, from Michael Buble the first time I talked to him, which was after Yvonne had already, Yvonne and I a few times said, yeah, sure, yeah, it's right. Mike Buble wants to talk to me, whatever. Um, that first time I talked to him, he made it clear to me how many people around the NHL watched his stuff and how much he promoted it. Uh, the channel's growth, apparently, uh, part of it can be attributed to, to Mike himself, that he would talk a lot to broadcast teams and GMs and coaches and, and players about my channel and what he'd seen on the channel, which was very humbling and very eye-opening, where I was like, okay... All right, then. So one thing that I, I could get away with in 2016, which I would not do in 2024, is um, if I thought a player was just a dirty player back in 2016 and I wanted to curse him out, I could do that. If I think that now, I have to be a lot more careful what I say and how I say it. And it's it's not as much like, oh, well, you're just censoring yourself. No, I'm, I'm just understanding that my audience has changed. My audience has grown and... It, I mean, there's so much negativity out there as it is. It's it's just there's so much negativity everywhere. I, I'd rather that my channel didn't have that. So there are certain players that I may not be a big fan of, but the only way that you can figure that out is that I if I don't do a career video, that can be an indication. That can be an indication. 
and if I just don't talk a lot about a player. If I talk a lot about a player, it's because I really like him. That's basically the general rule. And I will usually like your third liners, fourth liners, your fringe defenseman, a guy who's been down in the AHL for years and gets a call up. I'm rooting for him all the way. Um, as as a, a, a short man, I was always the last guy taken, whether it was in school for any kind of sport, which frustrated me when I was good at it. Like, I could understand when it was rugby. And I was like, yeah, I suck. Rugby is not my thing. But when it was floor hockey and I'm being picked next to last, I'm like, seriously, you guys are you guys are going to regret this. Um, that's where the golf shot comes out for that. But, um, you know, just right by the year a couple of times. But it, I've, I was always picked last, uh, even at Vantage. When I, I went to work there, I was uh, part of a hiring, because they, 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 hire, they hire a lot of people because they can't keep staff. Um, but there was, I think, five of us went to the floor, and it was, okay, who gets first pick? Well, I was the last pick. I, by default, went to the line that uh, I ended up working on for years. I ended up working really well on that line. And I outlasted every single person who came onto that floor with me. Some of them were gone within the first two weeks, but they were tall, so... <laughs> he's tall, so okay. he's tall and he's young. Yeah, and he's not gonna last. He's useless. What do you tell he's useless? So when I see hockey players coming into the league that are on the smaller side and be like, oh, I don't know, maybe I think to myself, you know what? It happens in pro sports too, where players get told they're too small, they're not gonna make it, they're too slow, they're not gonna make it, and then they do. And so I though that's why I really root for the the fringe players. It's not that I, I want to be different, it's that I identify more with a fringe player that I'm going to identify with the superstar. And not only that, I think if you sat down and had a discussion and you talked about career stuff and you wanted to sit down with a nice long, say, one and a half hour podcast, who's going to give the more interesting stories? The the superstar player who made you know $100 million in his career and was in the league for 15 years playing for the same team or the guy who made $2 million in his career and bounced around between various AHL teams and NHL teams and maybe played in Europe Who's going to have more stories? Who's going to have more colorful stories to share as well? So I, I just, I sometimes find those players more interesting than the superstar players as well. Uh, they don't have anything handed to them. They've got to work for everything and they understand their role. And for guys who understand that role and accept it, I, I like that. That's why when a first rounder comes up and they're seen as a bust, but they end up on a third or fourth line and they're doing their job well, I praise them for it. And I say, I can't call them a bust. So the, the channel's reach, once I understood how big it was, I understood I had to, should change how I talked about things. Um, when I meet people in person, it's different. Um, when I meet people in person, I'm, I'm, then, I'm, then I'll swear, sure, um, which sometimes raises eyebrows. Uh, and I will talk about things I don't talk about in videos. Uh, some of the more salacious stuff that you hear about um, I, I hear the gossip. I've known gossip for ages. I, I'm a Canuck fan. We, this, what do we what do we have? We don't have cups. We gossip. So um, yeah, it, it it's different when I meet people in person than videos because it kind of has to be. And then there's the whole value of being independent. So the comparison between what I do and what like major networks do, it, I I find that to be kind of I find it silly because it's it's basically me. Like Yvonne does a lot of production stuff. She helps me out a lot. Um, she does a lot of the stuff on the on the back end that people don't see, right? It really truly is a partnership. If if Yvonne wasn't helping me with this, um, I don't think I'd have a Discord. Um, I, I don't know if I'd have Patreon. I, I don't know how many things I wouldn't have because I don't know if I could manage it. I don't know if, if just as one person I could manage it. Um, and I, I, I really do find value in it. So I've had a couple of different offers over the years to, hey, you want to try to work with us? And hey, can we pry you away from YouTube to do this? And my answer has been, no, I'm happy. Um, seeing how many people in traditional media or just, you know, however you want to look at it, print media, get laid off and get fired. And they can be really good at their job and just you're gone the next day. So understanding how that works, uh, me being independent means unless I fire myself, I don't see any pink slips anywhere. Um, I, unless I fire myself, uh, I'm 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 all right. Uh, obviously, uh, it it is it is just bizarre to me because I did spend over 20 years working at kind of thankless jobs, but I think it has given me perspective. So like this past weekend was it was tough. 
Um, a lot of hockey. It was like 21 hours of, of hockey games and losing an hour of sleep in there as well. And and sometimes it can get frustrating. There's times where it gets frustrating and it's like, you know, it, it'd be nice to, to skip one of these really busy days. But I, I understand my role. Um, I understand my job. And that is that is part of what's expected of my job. And I expect that of myself. So while there's people who might say, hey, you want to take a busy night off, you can. I have that expectation of myself. I set that expectation for myself. I must meet that expectation or it's going to bother me. Um, let's say we went out to a movie on a night where there's 15 games on. I would, I would, that would eat at me. That would bother me. That would really, really bother me a lot um, because I'd miss stuff and I know I would miss stuff. So while I miss stuff while I'm watching those 15 games, if I was missing stuff while I wasn't watching, it would bother me a lot more. I don't know if I could enjoy the movie. My guess is probably not because I would feel like I was playing hooky and I was letting people down. Um, I understand, and going back to 2016, when I started out as a YouTuber, there were certain channels I would watch daily. There were certain channels I would watch as often as I could. And when I was going through a really hard time in my life, that sense of normalcy was important. So everything in my life was all in upheaval, and I was by myself, and I was upset, and I was angry all the time. But the fact that a part of, of my life was the same as it had been the whole way through, which watching YouTube videos was a big part of that, uh, it, it did make a difference. For that 15 minute YouTube video, everything felt okay. I was all right. And I could just kind of forget everything and just, just listen to whoever it was I was watching. And I was good. Like yesterday, here's an example. Here's a name you've never heard me say before, Markiplier. Uh, Markiplier uh, put out a video yesterday. It's just I'm tired and I watched it and a lot of it, honestly, I, I identified with, with parts of that and with a lot of what he had to say. Uh, while he's not doing what I'm doing, I identified with some of what he said and some of the, the tired feeling he had. But I don't know, just the way he brought it across, I was like, you know, I, I, think, I think I can... You know, I'll get through the rest of the regular season. I, I'll and then you know, playoffs. Playoffs are always a lot of fun to cover. And then it's summer, and our plan is to go to Las Vegas in August. I know that sounds really repetitive because it kind of is, but remember, before my first trip to Las Vegas in 2018, I had never really traveled. Um, I had plenty of years in Chilliwack where I just didn't leave Chilliwack, and I mean years, not leaving town. So the idea of getting on a plane, that was not something I had even considered before 2016. And even when we were planning our first trip to Las Vegas back in 2018, it just felt so weird. And then we got there and it was like, wow, we actually got here. Our most recent trip down to Disneyland, um, I met subscribers. I played street hockey in Anaheim. How would I have been able to do that years back? I wouldn't have. I, I wouldn't have. And so I, I do appreciate everything that the channel's provided. Um, I do get tired. I, I do get, I do feel a, some sense of burnout here and there, but I, I manage it pretty well because uh, I've, I've been doing this long enough now that I think I've gotten better at managing the burnout. But yeah, and then I, I, I make member videos here and there too because I do appreciate that there are people paying for monthly memberships. And so being able to make videos for them where I'm, I'm more myself and I'm less the hockey guy because uh, th there is a difference between the two. Um, I, I do appreciate having that outlet as well. So, you know, no life is perfect. Um, it, it, it never is exactly as it appears, whether it's somebody you follow on Instagram or it's a channel on YouTube or it's somebody you follow on the formerly known as Twitter. Um, it's never a per perfect life. It's just, it's not a thing. But things for me are much, much better now than they were back in 2016. So when people talk about, ah, he was so much more honest and so much more himself. No, I was a lot more angry. I was a lot more bitter. I was, I, I was basically just a, a, a shell at that point. And I, I, didn't, I, I didn't think things would ever get better. And I, I just felt like I was just going to be miserable and alone in that apartment for the rest of my life. So the life I have now is pretty good. Uh, going to Anaheim last, last month was just absolutely fantastic. And those trips can really do a lot to rejuvenate me. I know I came off of that trip to Disney and saying, you know what? I feel really good now. I'm really excited to get back to work, get back to making videos. 
because I met so many people and I met media people that watched my videos and and it just I was just really appreciative of all of that and it, it really does help so that's why that's part of the reason I like taking those trips too is because it, it does kind of you know give me that uh, that rejuvenation and that oomph to, to you know get things done uh, but yeah so I just wanted to make this video today for all you fine people on the internet because uh, I know I, I do see the comments here and there but ah, I wish he showed more emotion in the reviews yeah it, it, it doesn't come across well and I'll, I'll put it this way so Vancouver wins a game say eight nothing they went eight nothing over Calgary we'll put it as Calgary uh, back in 2016 I would have had a laugh about that I would have joked about it I would have made all kinds of flames jokes probably would have gone on for like half a week or a week now motion gets taken out of it I'll farthest I would go is probably say as a Canuck fan I was very happy with tonight's game as a Flames fan you'd have to be concerned with the way that that went and then I go through what happened in the game and then at the end just say so this helped Vancouver how do you feel as a Flames fan if you're watching this because I have to look at it from a point of view of both fan bases I want them to watch this video I don't want to come across as you know I'm fanboying plus uh, the one thing that I'll say to a lot of young fans because I know a lot it's a lot of the younger younger fans that'll do the gloating and the yeah our my team's great people by my age I think we've learned not not to do that I I learned at about 18 not to do that um but when you when you gloat like that the the moment that something bad happens to that team you're gloating about being really good everybody remembers you gloated everybody remembers you gloated and they they put that in the back of their mind and they can't wait to search you out when your team gets eliminated from the playoffs and they'll probably be wearing something, whether it's a hat or a pin or just maybe they drew a little logo of the team that knocked them out. Um, you might even get a whole bunch of Joel Auto cards sent to you in the mail, which I, I got in 1989. Uh, my friend in Edmonton, uh, he had moved away a couple years before, um, wanted to congratulate me on Vancouver getting knocked out of the playoffs by Calgary in the first round. He sent me like 20 Joel Auto hockey cards because it, the puck went in off Auto's skate um in game seven and that eliminated the canucks so you got to watch the gloating um and i didn't even gloat with him i still to this day dave if you're watching this you got to contact me because i i don't under what did i do why did i get 20 joel auto cards i didn't want the joel auto cards i don't think i still have the joel auto cards i'm pretty sure i don't but uh, i have joel auto cards just not the ones he sent me which doesn't mean i want dave to send me a bunch more joel auto cards all right uh, thank you guys so much for watching if you got all the way through this. Uh, if you are in that camp that, oh, I wish he'd start swearing and just be all the objective and everything. Sometimes I swear in a member's video. It does happen here and there. I, I don't mind letting it slip here and there in a member's video. Uh, but it, it it is something that I, I keep off camera. So you, you kind of have to see me in person for that kind of that kind of interaction. And then I can just full on fanboy and and then I can say, hey, did you see that game? They won eight nothing the other night. Man, that's not that great. And that's that's when I can do that. But anyways, thank you guys so much for all your support. Um, it's 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 humbling how big the channel is and that I've been doing this for this long, almost eight years now, um, since the channel started to grow. Almost eight years since I started talking to my wife uh, via. Uh, Messenger, which didn't didn't start right away. Uh, we talked over the, the dating site a bit first, and then we moved off of that. But yeah, there you go. Uh, thank you guys so much for all your support the whole way through. If you haven't already hit like and subscribe, I'm not sure there's anything in this video that would make you hit subscribe, but you could hit like. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.